Hey guys, Jacob here and welcome to the new video Python from Zero to Pro. It's a fourth video guys and as in this video I'll cover topics such as dictionaries so you will be able to connect pieces of information, access them very quickly and I will cover uh, a lot of operations on dictionaries. Then we'll talk about while loops which are actually similar to the for loops uh, from the previous video and also I'll discuss, uh, I'll show you how to use functions in Python so basically you'll be able to reuse your code multiple times. So let's jump to the code. Hey guys, so we are back in the code. Uh, first of all, I would like to cover the homework solution from the last time. So as you know, it was a simple FizzBuzz test, which is very often on a, like, as a question on interviews. So let's basically cover it. Uh, so the solution is pretty simple. We will make a for, for loop um, from one to 21, because as you know, 21 is excluded in Python. And if the number um, is going to be divided by, by three, and number is going to be divided by five, then uh, basically we want to print the FizzBuzz, right? So this is our first condition. So this thing uh, will always check for the first, if this is divided by those two numbers. And then we have a if number is divided by three, then we print the Fizz, and if the number is divided by five, then we print pass, right? And else, like in any other cases, we're going to just print the number. Let's see if this works. Yep, as you see, works perfectly. All right, so now we are talking about dictionaries and their powerful implementation um, is a part of what makes actually Python really effective. And now I would like to talk what is the difference between the list and dictionary. So basically, a list is like an ordered sequence of objects, but where, where like dictionaries, they are like sets and they are unordered. Uh, basically, the difference is that the, the dictionary, you access uh, the, its items by keys, not uh, by the index. And you can store uh, information about a person, so um, like its name, age, location, profession, whatever you will uh, think about. So what are we gonna do? Uh, we're gonna first create a dictionary. Let's call it city population. And yeah, we can create like Berlin. So this is the key. Let's, let's write like 300, 3000. We can make Warsaw, let's say Paris, All right? So this is the, our dictionary. We can print out. Uh, as you can see, it's in the curly brackets. It's a little bit different than an array. Mm, how to get, uh, now let's see how to get the uh, items, uh, the values from the items. So basically by the key, let's see, Berlin, it's 3000, how to add a new uh, key and value to the dictionary, it's also pretty simple. All you do is uh, you type the, R, uh, the, the, the name of the variable with the new key. Let's, uh, let's do like Barcelona, Barcelona, let's write like this, oh sorry. Let's make it like this and let's print it out. Yeah, as you know, as you can see, we got a new key with the value. All right, now I would like to talk about some methods you can use on uh, our dictionaries. Let's copy our city population for the beginning. One of them is a len. It will actually tell us uh, about the number of the stored en uh, entries. So basically the number of key value pairs. So here is a three, as you can see, of course. We can also delete the uh, delete the, the pair, like let's delete the Berlin. Now when we write city population, yeah, Berlin is not there anymore. Let's reassign it again. Mm, yeah, of course. We can also uh, check if there is like 
the key inside the dictionary. So we can say, for example, Berlin in city population, it returned it true, but we change like, uh, let's say, Poznan in a city population, it returns false. Okay, the other way to access the items from dictionaries, actually, is by the method called get. So let's print the city population dot get, and we want to have, let's say, Berlin. So what, so it will return the value uh, of the this key. And what I'm talking about is because simply when we try to access the the key which is not in the dictionary, it will just print us the error. Let's call Barcelona. As you can see, this is the key error. And now when we try to access this by the get method, it will simply return us non value. We can also define the default parameter here, which will be like no CT. And now we will have instead of non, just no information that there is no such a city as Barcelona in our dictionary. Merging dictionaries. So basically, let's uh, say that we have our first dictionary, which is knowledge. Frank, uh, he knows the Perl language, Monica knows two programming languages. And we have the, our uh, second dictionary, knowledge too, with the new guy who knows Python and with the update from the previous guy, like Frank now knows also Python. And now we want to actually merge those dictionaries into one, into new one. So knowledge, we update, this is the method, and we just type knowledge too. And now basically when we print knowledge, you will see that now uh, Frank, uh, Frank's key uh, was updated by the new value uh, Python. Monica was stayed the same. And we also added the new guy, uh, Gaido, and he knows the Python. So this is, this is how you merge dictionaries into uh, the one. Okay, so now let's iterate uh, through the dictionaries. So let's copy, uh, let's uh, iterate just by keys. This is how you iterate it. Now we can say print key. This is how you iterate just for the keys. Now let's say that we want to iterate for uh, just for uh, values. We do for key uh, for value in knowledge values. We can print out the value. All right. So we got uh, the values from the keys. The other way to do the same is actually by accessing the the dictionary by the keys. So when we iterate the keys, we can actually see actually get the values by the keys and it will actually return us uh, the same. Mm, also, we can iterate through both keys and values. To do that, we do value in knowledge. Uh, we use the method dot called items, which will basically iterate through, from both uh, keys and values. All right, guys, now let's talk about the while loops. The, the concept of the loop is the same as the for. So you iterate through items, but you can do much different operations. I will show you the basic example to create the sum of the numbers from uh, one to 100 using the while loop. So you basically got the idea what I mean, meaning. So let's create a while loop. Sum of numbers will always increase the value. Okay. All right. So here you have the clear example that we are uh, how we are doing it. So basically, this is the condition where when the while loop should uh, finish. So when whenever the counter will, whenever this um, this this thing will be false, then the value will crash, right? So we are basically increase, increasing counter each time by one and we are adding this number to the, our sum. 
and this is the the value of this uh, while all right guys so now i would like to show you some different example of using the while loop basically uh this will be a guess number game it's very popular when you learn programming languages so we'll create it in a python so a human player has to guess a number between range 1 to n when n is our number and the program will inform you inform you if the number is too too big or uh, the number if this is equal or it's too too small and of course uh, the numbers randomly generated each time so we're going to make the infinite loop wide true and then we'll each time ask for a user input for a new number. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, and if our guess is actually bigger than to be guessed, we need to make the hint that number is too large. Um, and elif guess is less than to be guessed, it's the opposite so the number is too small and of course at the other example is nice you nice you one so we guess the number and we can also break the loop now let me just interrupt here because it was running uh yeah let's make it so new number four the number is too small Let's do 50, too large, 25, too large is too small. Okay, we need to maybe do like 18, too large, yeah, 15. Yeah, we got a number. So this is basically the game using the uh, while true. I would recommend you to figure out it on your own a little bit, play with it and you'll understand it more. Alright guys, so now uh, let's jump to the functions. So basically functions are blocks of code which are created uh, to do a specific job. Like when you want to do a task, you can just call your function and pass your arguments and it will return you a value which you actually need. And one of the most important things about functions is that uh, you will not repeat your code multiple times. It will not be redundant. Uh, some of the people also call functions subprograms. So this is uh, how you define functions in a Python. The name, like, let's say print my name. This is the function. It will not return any value. It will just uh, print my name. And now I can use it multiple times. Print my name. Yeah, as you can see, it printed my name three times. You can also make it in a loop for like 100. Oh, sorry, it's already printing Print my name. So right now it's printed my name 100 times. All right, let's make a different function. Let's make a function which will actually return the temperature in degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Let's call it Fahrenheit. Uh, here as an argument with the temp we need Celsius, Celsius temp, and it will return actually our temperature, Celsius temperature. This is from a Wikipedia. This is how you changed uh, Celsius temperature uh, degrees for Fahrenheit. And let's make a loop maybe an, uh, an array, let's make 50, 20, 25, and let's execute our function, Fahrenheit.t. And basically this is the temperature change from Celsius to Fahrenheit. All right, and the last thing I wanna discuss in this video is modifying the list uh, within the function. So whenever you are in the situation that you want to pass the list to the function, you have to remember one thing that you're actually passing the function, the real list, so the function has the direct access to it. You're not passing the copy of the list. So any change you make in a function, uh, you also change to the list. So those changes are permanent. 
So I will show you an example. What do I mean by that? So let's create a function and call it check function. As an argument, we can do list to pass, whatever. Um, and here we can do the while loop, which we learned today. Let's do while number is less than length of our list to pass. And we can change the list to pass values all to one. And we don't even, we will not return anything. Uh, we'll just print list to pass inside the function. Now let's create our list. Let's do like this. Let's print our list. So as you can see, our list is one, two, three, four. Now we want to pass our list to the function. So check function, uh, our list, uh, exactly. Sorry, I made a mistake. <laughs> we forgot to increment the value here, exactly. So yeah, basically right now we called the function and it print out our list inside the function. And now we want to actually see again our list and yeah, as you can see, it's the same. So basically uh, the function took our list and changed uh, its numbers without returning anything. So it's really, really important to remember. And now I will show you how to prevent this kind of behavior. So let's copy uh, one more time our list. So basically what we need to do, uh, we have to uh, copy the list. We don't want to pass the reference to the same list. Instead of that, we just want to copy our list and pass the list which is copied, it's not the same. So how we do it, like I'll show you. So we want to do this and this is the operator, the slice operator in Python, how you copy the list. And now when we do it, uh, inside the list, we are printing this one, which is changed, but it, it, uh, it didn't affect our list. As you can see, it's still the same. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe, like and click the bell icon so you can get notification whenever I post the video. See you in the next video.